Good morning, Aries. This is going to be your weekly reading. And I did want to say real quick that um, if I ever say anything and then like later on I contradict myself, it's because I'm learning and growing too. I'm on a spiritual journey and, you know, my energy changes so much that one week, um, I, and everyone's on a spiritual journey. <laughs> I was aware that I was on a spiritual journey in 2016 and so it's kind of very prevalent in my life. I can't not think about it every day, the fact that I'm on this spiritual journey. But um, what I did want to say is, you know, um, I'm learning and growing too. And sometimes I'll receive clarity on something and my energy is always changing. And I might be like, whoa, you know, I that doesn't ring true or doesn't resonate with me anymore. Um, and so I realize, I've just been realizing sometimes I contradict myself. But it's just because my energy is always changing too. The other thing I wanted to say also... Um, is I, when I first started this channel, I didn't know what direction I was going to go in, but now I want to say, um, that I am not a fortune teller. And the reason why I say this is because everyone is a co-creator with the universe and we all have magical manifesting powers to connect to source energy and to create any type of reality that we want. Um, so I can say, you know, love is coming in and it is, it's always coming in. You just have to align to it, you know? So you might be like, well, it didn't happen this week or what happened. You know, maybe it's because you weren't ready. Um, because it's all about energetic alignment and you can create any type of situation that you want whenever you want to. Basically, I'm just letting you know what the energy is right now and what your blocks are to abundance in the areas of money or love or whatever else. Um, with that being said, this is a collective energy for the sign of Aries. Um, so do take what resonates. If you'd like to have a personal reading, I can give you more detailed messages that have come through. So that's my public service announcement. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and get started then. Um, I have got um, the King of Swords. And basically what I'm getting with this card, the energy that I'm getting, is that you've kind of been in hermit mode lately and isolated yourself and cut people off. Um, and I'm getting that this is how you deal with pain. You really don't involve others because, you know, I, I know that you've had a rough time lately. Um, a lot of things have happened. Um, there have been a lot of changes. Um, so you have kind of pulled back your energy and you are recharging your battery. But do make sure that you do reach out for help with friends and family. You know, people that you really trust, that you closely resonate with, your soul family especially, and that doesn't even have to be blood family. Um, because to clarify that card, we have two hearts, one soul, sisterhood. And so this is all about soul family. And soul family comes in to help you um, unconditionally, you know, to be there for you, to support you. So do reach out to these people. Um, even if it's, you know, and you don't even have to talk about what you're going through, just, um, spend some time and, um, connecting with, with someone else who, you know, is a close vibrational blueprint because soul family are, I mean, we're very close, um, vibrationally and energy wise with our soul family and that's how you'll recognize them. Sorry, my stomach's growling. I haven't eaten. <laughs> I just hopped right up and decided, oh, no, I need to make my Aries video. And we have the Eight of Wands. And basically what I'm getting with this is this this is that contemplation card. Really meditating and going within. That's a beautiful energy. Um, I do feel like you've been doing that. Um, and also, really going within and really um, trying to... to it's almost like trying to connect the dots um, of why certain things happened the way that they did and um, what type of impact it had on your life and what were the lessons. You know, really just contemplating and kind of um, looking back on the past. And that's all right to do when you are trying to look for patterns or cycles that you've been in and trying to kind of make sense of things and have closure. But do move on. Don't just stay in this energy. Do make sure that you're focused your attention on your day-to-day -day activities. You are present. Um, and so don't forget to live in the now. 
that's the message that's coming up because to clarify that card we have the transmission pre uh, spreading of conditions influence and impact and basically what I'm getting with this card also is that same energy of just kind of looking back on things and being like, um, why did this have to happen or, or what did I do for this to go wrong? That kind of energy. But there are no mistakes if you learn from them. So always remember that. And do forgive yourself also. When we're, we forgive others, we forget to forgive ourselves. A lot of times we can be harder on ourselves than we can be on anybody else. Um, that is the message that I got with that card. I should have turned my camera, my, um, my flash on. I apologize if it's a little dark. I'll try to put the cards closer. We have the Nine of Wands. Basically what I'm getting with this is this is fears right here these are your fears creeping in these are fears and doubts and i learned something yesterday actually two days ago because i kind of over the weekend i went through um what i would consider to be another ego death a lot of times people say that the ego doesn't die um, i don't believe that it dies either so it's really more um a figure of speech basically what we do is we shed those layers of our ego as we become more aware and more conscious of those cycles and those patterns which you've been doing and we shed them and the ego does not want us to be happy it doesn't like that because it's really scared that its days are limited and understand your ego is the physical form that you incarnated in when you came to earth basically to this planet um, because before that, you were source energy. And you were an endless, timeless, eternal soul who, have, who has had other forms. So basically, your ego is this personality that you have taken on. And um, lots of conditioning developed your personality. Well, as you start spiritually awakening and remembering who you are as a soul... You start stripping off things that no longer resonate because you recognize them to be your ego or this personality that you've taken on in this particular lifetime or timeline as I like to call it. And so as a result of that conditioning, you have these fears. Over the weekend, um, I had to really go face to face with my fears and I could not figure out why I could not clear these fears. I have fear, fear of rejection is my big one. And I, I've really become aware of that over like the past three, four days that rejection is my core wound. That is my deepest fear. And your deepest fear will be your greatest spiritual teacher because you will keep attracting lessons over and over again to teach you not to be fearful of rejection. And every time this would come up, I'd be like, I cleared that. I cleared that. I cleared that. What is going on? So I finally got to where um, I was like, how do I release these fears? So I watched a video by Eckhart Tolle, and he was talking about the best way to release a fear is you don't. You accept it. You face it no matter how painful it is, and then you release it. Or you accept it. I'm sorry, you don't release it. You accept it. And that's how you transmute fears into love. You accept that about yourself. And once you stop resisting it and you accept it, it can get out of the way. And I've done that. And it's gotten so much better. And I may never completely get rid of those fears, but they're no longer dominating me or controlling me anymore. And I will eventually stop attracting those lessons. This is that shadow. This is that shadow side where those fears are hidden at because your ego does not want you to become aware of them, but they're playing in the background the whole time. So you have to really bring those into the light. We have the two of pentacles. And basically what I'm getting with this, the message that I got right away with this, um, was you see how these are almost like ideas right here that are tossed about in her head. And she has lots of ideas. But 
you have to be very careful and very mindful of your thoughts. I'm very mindful now from day to day and monitoring my thoughts because my thoughts tend to get away from me. And before you know it, I'm obsessing or I'm worried about something that has not happened yet. And this is also about manifestation. And we manifest whatever we prepare for. So if you are preparing for something that you don't want to happen... Um, by really obsessing about it and thinking about it over and over again, that's exactly what you're going to get. But even then, even when something shitty shows up that you did prepare for and you really didn't want to manifest, but you did, don't feed it energetically. Just kind of ignore it. <laughs> and you will see. Um, that it really wasn't as bad as you thought it was. And it really helps you to face that fear. Admit your true feelings to yourself. Be honest with yourself. Only you know what it is that you truly desire. So once again, this is not, uh, this is all about not manifesting shitty things, things that you don't want. And how do you stop shitting, uh, shitting? <laughs> how do you stop manifesting things that you don't want? By not focusing on them and really getting in touch once you start shedding these onion layers and getting to the core essence of who you truly are as a soul, you might find that the things that you thought you wanted you don't even want anymore because they were from ego. We have the Six of Wands. And this is all about really stepping outside your comfort zone. That is the message that I'm getting here, is that sometimes we have to kind of venture out and step outside these boundaries that we have placed around ourselves. Um, and this could be, you know, shutting others out, this energy that I got right here, or not wanting to try new things, just being in that whole, I know it's really hard for me. The reason why I don't like change, I hate change is because it takes me a while to learn how to do something because I'm so scared I'm going to fail at it and not do it right. Um, that it takes me a while to kind of get into the energy of really doing something, trying something new. And then once I master it, I'm good. But then I'm like, man, I'm really comfortable doing this and it was really hard for me to do this in the first place. I don't want to change and do something new. You know, and it freaks me out because I see people who just all the time are just real adventurous and um, they just jump right in and start new jobs and move to new places and <laughs> kind of freaks me out a little bit because I, you know, and then at the same time, I'm kind of envious. I am because, and I know that's a fearful energy, I know. <laughs> I do still have some remnants of envy that I'm working on right now that are ego-based that have to do with not wanting to fail, wanting to be very good at things and be the best at them, but that's another story. Um, so what I was saying with this is this is all about stepping outside your comfort zone and trying new things. And once you align more to your soul, this soul energy here, um, you're not going to want to do the same things you were doing anymore. Spiritual awakening is a long lonely journey sometimes it is because people look at you like I know I everything in my life has changed I've lost my job um, I've lost friends I've lost two jobs actually and everything I had lots of tower moments and things came crashing down but I had to realize that that really wasn't who I was anyway and those things no longer resonated with me and I had been being guided to leave those things and people and circumstances alone. And I wouldn't out of fear of change. And when that happens, the universe just comes in and just swoops everything out from underneath you. Just know this. It does happen. Um, so we have the sun card. And the sun is all about positivity. Um, these are positive changes that are coming in. Um, lots of new things, but you really have to kind of get out of the funk you've been. You've been in this hermit mode of um, maybe you've just been like, you know what, I'm just going to throw myself into my job. That way I don't have to think, I don't have to feel. Um, 
just kind of numb yourself. Maybe you're numbing yourself with substances and um, with whatever's going on right now. Um, but you are going to have to feel. And we want to feel because this is how we have um, more enriching, deeper experiences in the world. And, you know, when you have the type of superficial, um, I'm just going to go through the motions and become an unemotional robot, you are missing life altogether. So do make sure that you are really um, admitting your feelings right now, really feeling through any type of fears that come up. Um, we have the King of Wands. And... This is an action card. This is all about going for what you want. Um, but the message that's coming in is to stop trying to control it. Whatever type of spiritual path you are on, you're going to get there anyway. You don't have to force it whatsoever. You know, I, I the other day I was thinking about um, when people prepare for emergencies I'm not taking away from that, but whatever you prepare for, you do manifest, so keep that in mind. And you know, if I, if it's meant for me to go out here and die in a car accident, then you know, that's what's gonna happen. I can't do anything to change that. So what good does it do to worry about it, basically? You know what I'm saying? Um, we're all gonna end up at the same place anyway. We just have more lessons depending on what paths that we take, what choices we make. Mystique, keep charging ahead and don't take no for an answer. Expect miraculous situations to appear, solutions to appear. So whatever type of problems you're dealing with, just release them. Stop resisting them. Um, the key to difficult situations is just to, when your back's against the wall, you don't have any other choice but just to accept it is what it is and just have more faith. More faith that things are being worked out in your favor because the universe always, always has your back. Know this. We have the Queen of Wands. We have the King and the Queen of Wands. And this is really about manifestation. And the message that's coming through is be very mindful of what your intentions are set on. I have to check my energy and check my intentions every day because my ego tries to get wonky and just make it about me. And it is about you, but um, I'm trying to describe this energy. I had a self-realization and it was really a tough truth for me to face because I am so competitive, but I, I was raised in a household where, you know, my mom really had me and my siblings competing for attention and whatever else, you know, any type of material gain. And um, it made me very, very competitive and I found myself, um, at times I still find myself wanting other people and this is a hard truth i failed i really faced the other day other people to fail so that i could win and that i had to really face that truth about myself and so i am mindful every single day okay i am wanting this okay am i wanting the, to succeed at this um, thing that I'm trying to manifest. Am I trying to manifest this to make me look really good so that I have a false sense of purpose and self-confidence? Um, because when you're in that energy, it's a fear-based energy. And you are blocking yourself from truly bringing in what it is that you're trying to bring in because you're not coming from a good place with it. So that's the message that I'm getting. Really check your energy and ask yourself why you're trying to manifest things and find out what will truly make you happy um, because we got to look past the stories we tell ourselves um, tell us you know I used to I had a shopping problem <laughs> I had a real bad retail problem like I couldn't not even have a credit card I still it's gonna be a while um, because that was my self-confidence. That was my self-worth. My mom bought me things to show me love. And so that was love to me. 
And I would tell myself, oh, I'm going to get all these outfits and all these shoes and stuff. Nobody's going to tell me nothing. I know I'm going to be all that and this and whatever else. And <laughs> that is a false sense of happiness. That is not true happiness because what happens when you can't afford to buy those things anymore? I guess you're just not worth anything anymore. False person. Once again, that's taking on, and this video is going to be a little longer because I got off on some tangents but and told some personal stories, but I really was trying to tie it all together, so I apologize if this video is going to be a little lengthier than the other ones, um, but the messages are coming through. False person. This is not... This is that whole energy of when you put out a false front, you're going to get a false front back. So if you have somebody who is not being truthful with you, check yourself. Are you being truthful with yourself? And is this, this is once again goes back to that situation. Why is it you're trying to manifest a situation? Because sometimes we will get something to show us um, that isn't what you wanted. We have the main male. And once again, the energy that I'm getting with this is a false sense of self-confidence. Make sure you check yourself and know where it comes from. Make sure that your self-confidence comes from a place of not having fears. You're still going to have those fears like I was talking about up there, but can you live with them and not let them dominate your life? And a lot of times when we do accept things, they do move and they do change and they do diminish because you're no longer feeding them energetically. So do make sure that you are checking yourself and to make sure you are being authentic and you're honoring yourself and that your self-confidence does come from a true place. We have toil and labor. And this is that hard work, that al that alcohol. That workahol, and it could be alcohol too. I, I mean, that was a Freudian slip. If you're dealing with alcohol or uh, alcohol abuse or workaholicism, um, this is all about escape and really trying to avoid your true feelings right now, how you truly feel. And so do take some time off and stop running from yourself and stop running from your shadow because they're playing in the background right now. So do clear whatever type of fears and doubts and conditions that you do have. Um, well, Aries, this is your weekly reading and um, I hope I didn't get too personal. Like I said, I just experienced this whole other ego death over the weekend so it's all real fresh to me and you know I figure if I can share my experiences if they'll help somebody else I don't mind doing that um, but I will put in the description of the video my email address in case you're interested in a personal reading which I would do because I can really help you to see what's blocking you thank you